I think the coolest thing about Long Death Monk is the Hour of Reaping. So when I'm doing a build, I really do want to revolve it around the Hour of Reaping and how to get the most out of it. I think this build really hits that note. So we're going to be a half elf and we're going to use the Tasha's variant. Now I've used this a lot on a lot of these monk builds and there's a reason for that. Being able to get a 16, 16, then 17 on our dexterity constitution and wisdom is really big because at level four, we actually get to pick up a half feat and feats are going to be rare for monks. So picking up a feat is going to be nice. As far as where our 17 is going, it's definitely going into wisdom. This is going to be a wisdom based monk. Now, when we do a wisdom based monk we know that we're going into either cleric or druid first but in this particular case we're going cleric and we have to go nature cleric the reason we have to go nature cleric is because we have to pick up shillelagh if we don't have shillelagh we're not going to be a wisdom based melee build we'll have to be using cantrips if you go any other monk and for using those cantrips we're really not even taking advantage of our touch of death feature or our extra attack so going nature cleric is basically essential here how we're going to do our levels is we're going to go one cleric nature then we're going to go six into the way of the long death at that point we have branching paths there's some interesting things you can do with two more levels of cleric or you can just go straight way of the long death. Me personally, I'm taking the two in cleric, not because I think it's particularly better, but I do think it is a more interesting build with some unique synergies that I'm really excited to touch on. All right, so starting from the beginning, like I said, we're taking nature cleric. Bane is gonna be a very powerful spell for us. Bane in general is just good, but it's going to lower our enemy's resistance, both to our stuns and our hour of reaping. It is in a way going to pad our AC because it lowers our enemies to hit. So sometimes we're gonna be picking enemies that we think we're about to go toe to toe with because it's gonna make us less likely to get hit. Something to keep in mind with this build for basically the life of it until we get diamond soul is that concentration saves are not gonna be our strongest suit. And so we really need to pick and choose when we're using Bane in times where we feel like we can either afford to lose concentration or in times where we think we will not have to. The next thing we really need to talk about is touch of death. When most people think about using touch of death, they think about using the bag of rat strat where they reach into a bag, pull out a rat, squish it, and they use it as like this health pack. So touch of death is still going to help us every now and again, but depending on if your DM lets you do the bag of rats thing, it can be a lot of temporary HP throughout a day and, and pad you, or it's going to just be something that kind of happens every now and again that is nice but you might find that you're targeting weakened enemies or smaller enemies more often than you normally would because you're attempting to get those temporary HP. At level five, we pick up our ASI and I'm picking up a touch, go figure. The extra teleport is always nice for escaping situations or putting us exactly where we need to be, but we also get silvery barbs. Now, because we struggle with concentration, we're going to be using silvery barbs probably more often than you would think because Bane is kind of better overall, but if we lose concentration on it, it's not, and it affects our action economy where silvery barbs does not. But the combination of the two is where we get really crazy because next level, when we pick up stun strike this is nearly the best stunning strike you can have bane silvery barbs stunning strike combination is going to make our stunning strikes way more consistent than just a normal monk doing stunning strike at this point we're really great at dealing with single targets we can do these excellent stuns and then we can get temporary hp back for targeting these specific targets at level seven we're going to pick up hour of reaping and now we can affect groups of people and the same synergies that worked well for stunning strike work well for hour of reaping as well we're just dropping their resistance to make our hour of reaping really consistent the main problem you're going to be facing, it's going to affect your teammates. And so you're going to have to be very mindful of your positioning, get exactly where you need to be, which is often going to be away from your teammates where you can be swarmed. And then you're going to have to use our reaping. So a follow up to our reaping is often going to be your bonus action dodge action. It's not like we've been using flurry of blows. So our only key points are really going to the dodge action and to stunning strike. And I've mentioned this already, but that's worth mentioning again about the way the long death is that it is a very efficient key subclass. It does not even take your key to do your first two features. So up to this point, we have not even spent a single key on being away the long death monk. I talk way more about this in our way of the long death features dive. The video will be up above me. So check that out if you want me to go more with a fine tooth comb over these features. Now that we have options for single targets and mobs, I do want to bounce back over to cleric for a time. Cleric two is going to give us channel divinity, which I am never going to use very likely for the nature domain side of things. I'm just going to use it to get spell slots back. Just means extra spell slots throughout the day. Cleric three is where things get really interesting because we get second level spells and cleric second level spells bring some cool things to this build. The first is spiritual weapon. We are a wisdom based attacker and we don't really have a bonus action attack that isn't deck space by having spiritual weapon now we can do a d8 for our main attacks plus our wisdom as well as our bonus action so it gives us a stronger attack gain but on top of that we also get calm emotions calm emotions has really cool synergy with our hour of reaping because it makes our allies immune to the hour of reaping effect if you can read the fight and say this fight is going to be an absolute cluster then we i can cast this and still use hour of reaping every single turn but now my allies are immune to it but you do have to keep in mind concentration is still a problem for us but i do really like this synergy i think it's really cool and I've never heard anyone talk about it how 
effective it's going to be is going to be hit and miss, but I think it's cool and fun, so I wanted to include it in this build. Moving back to the way of the long death, there's a few things to talk about. Our Monk 11 feature, Mastery of Death, which we're going to be getting at level 14, is a really interesting feature that rewards you for saving your key points to the very end, and it's particularly good against these big enemies who don't die easy and hit like a truck. If I have one HP and I get attacked by a rat, I'm still going to have to use my one key point to stay up. If I'm fighting a Tarrasque, I'm still going to have to use my one key point to stay up. So the point is, is it, the bigger the enemy, the more value you get out of that key point. When we pick up Diamond Body very late in the campaign, that will take care of our concentration problem that we've had the whole campaign. And finally, I got to talk about Empty Body. Empty Body, I feel, is normally a very powerful feature, but for us, we have to balance it against the fact that they have to see us to be feared by us. So Empty Body isn't always going to be amazing. But in the case that we're not using our Hour of Reaping strategies, then Empty Body can come into play, give us a whole bunch of extra damage and resistance and all the good things it does. All right, so where are we at? Well, we're pretty well-rounded. We have ranged options with Toll the Dead, melee options with Shillelagh and Spiritual Weapon. We have options for single targets where we can stun them. We have great stuns. We have options for groups of people where we can do these mass fears. We're gonna have solid saves across the board because we're doing Dex, Constitution, and Wisdom. Although as a concentration-based save, our con saves aren't gonna be the best ever. And that's probably gonna be our biggest weakness throughout the career of this character. Now, this has been my take on how I would run the Long Death build, but I'd love to hear how you guys would run it or what you would do to improve mine. Also, we have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support the channel, go ahead and check it out. We'd really appreciate it. And other than that, I hope you have yourselves a kick-ass day and I'll catch you on the next one. See you then.